Have you been looking for a portable 12 volt power source? What if it were an eco-friendly, self-renewing source of power? My power box is just that, and I want to teach you how to build your own. Basically, it's just a plastic tackle box with cigarette jacks wired up to a battery that is charged by a solar panel or household electricity. It's just great for powering your cell phone or laptop computer on an extended outing or in an emergency situation where you're away from power for an extended period of time. It's also quite useful out on the boat for powering your marine electronics. And the tackle box has a rubber o-ring which makes it water resistant. If you are an amateur ham radio operator, you'll really appreciate the power box for field day or emergency operations in powering your ham station. The parts you will need to gather include the plastic tackle box, solar panel, cigarette jacks, some red colored and some black colored stranded 12 gauge copper wire, 12 gauge automotive style fuse holders, and several 20 amp ATC type fuses. In addition, you'll need some wire connectors and the 12 volt sealed gel cell battery along with a rubber grommet. I personally chose the largest battery I could find and fit in the tackle box comfortably and still had the lid close. It happens to be an 18 amp hour. Do not use a car battery, lawnmower or motorcycle battery for this project. A car battery contains sulfuric acid which will be sloshing around and could possibly leak out. In addition, car batteries hate being jarred, bumped, and dropped. You'll also need some scraps of styrofoam sheeting to nestle the battery and hold everything in place. If you want to be able to charge your power box with household electricity, you will also need a trickle charger rated for 12 volts DC at 500 milliamps and 110 volt flush mount or chassis style receptacle that will flush mount in the tackle box. In addition, you will need a 110 volt female jack similar to what goes on the end of a regular electrical extension cord. To do the job properly, you will be using a soldering iron or a soldering gun and a hot glue gun a hand drill or drill press, and basic hand tools. We will be drilling some fairly large holes in the thin plastic tackle box, so you will need to purchase or borrow a stepper bit and a hole saw to make a clean, precise hole. Okay, so let's get started. Assuming you want to be able to charge up your power box with household electricity and not just solar, we're going to make up a plug and a jack pigtail. Next, using a one and three quarter inch hole saw, we're going to carefully drill a hole in the side of the tackle box. Now we'll mount the receptacle using screws and nuts to hold it captive. We'll plug in our trickle charger. And lastly, we'll take our hot glue gun and glue the trickle charger to the floor and side wall of the tackle box. Next, measure out and plan where you would like for the cigarette jacks to be located. The lid can be removed from the tackle box and this will make it easier for drilling and mounting. Using the stepper drill bit, drill the holes for the cigarette jacks and mount the jacks. There are a variety of jacks available. There are even USB power jacks. One of the jacks in my project that you may not recognize is used in commercial television. It's a four pin power plug and it's a conventional plug that powers up all of our TV cameras and monitors. Next, you will need a fuse holder along with a 20 amp ATC style automotive fuse for each jack that you install. Every jack gets its own fuse, okay? First, let's join the fuse holders together, however many you may have. 
you can use wire nuts to join the wires together. You could solder them all together and tape it with electrical tape. Or better yet, I would recommend using these captive wire connectors from the Ideal Corporation. These Ideal connectors are quick connectors. They require no tools. You just strip back the wire and stick the wire in the hole and it's held captive forever. You won't be able to back the wire out once it's in place. It's really a tidy way to join your wiring together and once you have everything connected, these easily accept hot glue from your hot glue gun, which enables you to really make the installation a tidy one. Using your soldering iron or soldering gun, you will next join the fuse holders to each individual cigarette jack, paying special attention to polarity, making sure the red wire is soldered to the plus terminal and the black wire is soldered to the minus terminal. Warning, you can destroy your personal electronics if you do not pay attention to this important step. Polarity is a critical aspect in 12 volt DC power. Now, loosely place the battery down into the tackle box and figure out where it needs to sit so that the main lid can close all the way without the cigarette jacks and the wiring getting tangled up and banging into it. This will require some trial and error and sliding the battery around and figuring out exactly where it needs to go. Once you are convinced that the tackle box main lid will open and close smoothly without the wiring getting pinched and banged around, it's time to take a saw or a kitchen knife and cut up some styrofoam sheeting. Using your hot glue gun, form a cradle or a nest to pack the battery in place so that it cannot move around once it's placed inside the tackle box. I'm combining the positive wires from the jacks, the positive wire from the solar panel, and the positive wire from the trickle charger into a single fuse holder. I'm going to repeat this process for the negative or the black wires. I'm going to take all of the black wires, bring them together, using the ideal quick connector, join the wires together, and then connect the one single black wire to the negative terminal of the battery. Did you notice that there's no fuse holder on the negative side? This is normal. Now that you've connected all the wires, it's time to insert the 20 amp master fuse. The master fuse goes right at the battery. If we've made any mistakes or have any shorts, They'll be apparent at this time when you plug the fuse in because it will probably blow. Now that you've installed the main fuse on the positive terminal of the battery, your project is really complete. The unit is hot. As you may have noticed, there is no on-off switch. Once you put that fuse in, all of the cigarette jacks are live. They're hot. It's ready to go. Just some final words of safety. If you're using a sealed gel cell battery as I've recommended here in the video, you must never try to charge it with an automotive car charger. You will destroy the battery because it will be overcharged. You see, the gel cell wants to see no more than 13 and a half volts. It says so right here on the side of the battery. And the problem is, is that automotive chargers push out considerably more energy. Also, gel cell batteries are different than car batteries because they do not want to be quick charged or what some would call fast charging. This is a sure way to damage a gel cell battery. Don't try it. Gel cells are happiest when they are slow charged or trickle charged. Thanks for watching and I hope that you have success in building your own power box and get as much enjoyment out of it as I do mine.